Vakir's thirst for vengeance radiated in his words, his eyes glowing with hatred behind his mask as he mocked Dantalion, asking what Dantalion thought of his performance. The Beelzebub sword remained embedded in Dantalion's head, the blade driving deep into the skull. Bloodshot eyes glazed over as Dantalion's body slumped, appearing lifeless. For a moment, there was only the eerie silence of the aftermath, but the silence shattered as a low, guttural laugh emanated from the corpse. Dantalion's lifeless eyes flared to life, now glowing with an unholy light. His twisted gaze locked onto Vakir, and his lips curled into a deranged, almost ecstatic smile. Dantalion's face twisted with a combination of exhilaration and fury, veins bulging grotesquely across his skin. With a terrifying clarity, Dantalion rose, the wound in his head closing as if untouched by the blade. His laughter grew louder, echoing with an inhuman resonance that sent chills through the air. He addressed Vakir with venomous sarcasm, mockingly calling him a method-acting brat, his tone both amused and enraged. Dolores stared at the scene before her, her expression a mixture of confusion and fear as the realization dawned that Dantalion was still alive. Despite the blade of Nighthound's sword lodged deep into his skull, Dantalion's gaze shifted to her, his lips curling into a sinister, mocking smile. A flood of questions overwhelmed her thoughts, and her horror deepened as she turned to Vakir, desperate for answers. How could he still stand, unfazed by such a grievous wound? Vakir remained silent, his piercing gaze locked on Dantalion, assessing the grotesque reality of his foe. He knew now that Dantalion's position among the ten elite corpses was not mere legend. It was a testament to his unnatural resilience. Dantalion's laughter, rich with malice, broke the oppressive silence as his twisted amusement became apparent. He reveled in the tension, his cruel smile widening when he acknowledged Vakir as the one responsible for Andromalia's demise. Suddenly, a grotesque transformation began. The back of Quilty's head split open with a sickening crack, flesh and muscle strands tearing apart to reveal another face concealed within, beautiful, pale, and framed by snowy white hair, yet undeniably inhuman. The demonic glow in Dantalion's eyes remained unchanged. With a casual malevolence, he lamented losing Quilty's face, a guise painstakingly acquired, though his tone betrayed no genuine regret. Instead, it was an opportunity to flaunt his horrific power. Dantalion emerged fully from Quilty's corpse, discarding the hollow shell of his former disguise. His slim, feminine form stood radiant and unnerving amidst the carnage. He laid a hand on the lifeless shoulder of the discarded body, as if mocking its fragility, and revealed the horrifying truth. Every face he wore was stolen, a trophy taken from its owner, along with their memories life force, and identity. Each mask was another piece of his seemingly indestructible existence. Vakir's fury boiled over as Dantalion taunted him. He lunged with lethal speed, his sword raised, thirsting for vengeance. Dantalion's smug grin faltered as Vakir's blade struck, plunging deep into his stomach. The force of the attack sent shockwaves through the room, and the demon staggered, caught off guard by the sheer ferocity of the strike. Dolores watched the exchange, her expression a mix of horror and sorrow as the consequences of the battle unfolded before her. From the body Dantalion now inhabited, a desperate cry broke through the tension. The woman's voice, no longer controlled by the demon, pleaded for mercy, her sobs raw and filled with terror. Tears streaked her bloodied face as she begged to be spared, her words laced with despair. Her body, still under Dantalion's influence, began to deteriorate, blood streaming from her eyes and mouth as her own existence unraveled. Despite her cries, the mortal wound was irreversible. Her voice faded into silence, her eyes dimming as the light of life extinguished. Vakir withdrew his blade without hesitation, his expression cold and resolute as the lifeless body crumpled to the floor. Dolores trembled, tears welling in her eyes as the weight of what she had witnessed pressed down on her. This was not just a battle of steel, but a brutal confrontation with the horrors of demonic manipulation and unthinkable sacrifice. 
Fakir stood still, his gaze fixed on the lifeless body before him. Behind him, Dolores clasped her hands tightly over her chest, her sorrow palpable as the weight of the innocent life lost pressed upon her. Her mournful expression reflected the grief of witnessing a tragedy too horrific to comprehend. The corpse of the woman lay motionless until a sudden, unnatural twitch disrupted the stillness. With a grotesque squelch, the body split open, viscera spilling as a man slowly emerged from the shattered remains. His movements were sluggish and disoriented, his face twisted in confusion. Rising unsteadily, he sat within the remnants of the woman's body, his head turning from side to side as if searching for clarity. He muttered incoherently, his hand pressed against his head, recounting the last moment he remembered, buying meat pies for his daughter before darkness claimed him. Fakir did not waver, his stance unwavering and his grip on the Beelzebub sword firm. The man's words faltered, his sentence unfinished, as Vakir swung the blade in a single, brutal motion. The strike was clean and decisive, severing the man's head and sending it flying through the air. Blood sprayed in an arc before the lifeless body crumpled to the ground, a grim echo of the previous death. The air around Vakir seemed to freeze as his voice, calm and cold, cut through the tense silence. He declared Dantalion's arrogance for thinking such a ploy would work. The glowing lens of Nighthound's mask reflected the next unsettling sight, a child's face streaked with tears, emerging from the remains of the man. The child's trembling hands covered his face as he began to sob, his small frame shaking with the effort. His voice, soft and broken, pleaded for understanding, asking why Vakir was being so cruel. He wiped at his tear-streaked face with tiny fists, his cries rising in pitch as if trying to tug at any shred of sympathy from the man before him. Vakir observed silently, his piercing gaze betraying neither pity nor hesitation. The child's weeping grew louder, his cries desperate, but Vakir's calm demeanor did not falter. Finally, Vakir responded, his voice devoid of emotion, exposing the ruse. He had seen this ploy before in the face of Andromalius and knew the depths of Dantalion's deception. The act held no power over him now. The charade crumbled as the child's weeping stopped abruptly. His innocent features distorted grotesquely and his eyes shifted to an eerie, luminous green, the unmistakable signature of Dantalion. A sinister smile crept across the demon's face as he mockingly acknowledged Vakir's immunity. His childlike form began to contort, the delicate fingers of his hand elongating into a razor-sharp spike. With a sudden violent motion, Dantalion launched a mask-like fragment of his visage directly toward Vakir. The fleshy projectile struck Vakir's wrist with an audible crack, the unnatural object latching onto his flesh. Tendrils of demonic essence began to spread from the impact point, attempting to merge with his arm, their movements writhing and alive with malevolence. The air grew thick with tension as the battle between will and corruption began anew. The sudden strike caught Vakir completely off guard, his gaze snapping to his wrist in shock and pain as tendrils of malevolent energy began to burrow into his flesh. A searing heat spread from the impact site and his arm felt as if it were being consumed from within, a thousand needles stabbing into his nerves. Dantalion grinned wickedly, calling the attack a gift his voice dripping with mockery. Before he could savor his taunt, Vakir retaliated in a blur of motion, swinging the Beelzebub sword with brutal precision. The blade cleaved through Dantalion's neck, sending his head spiraling through the air. But even severed, the head did not fall lifelessly. Instead, it twisted unnaturally, spinning rapidly as grotesque limbs sprouted from its sides. Flesh stretched and melded grotesquely until Dantalion reformed into the lithe figure of a young man with dark hair. His hands and feet dug into the ground with claw-like force, halting his momentum as he came to a stop several feet away. A mouth appeared on his palm, curling into a cruel grin, its high-pitched laughter reverberating in the scorched air. As Dantalion stood grinning, Vakir faltered. 
A wave of overwhelming confusion and terror crashed over him, his vision blurring as if the world were spiraling out of focus. His breathing grew shallow and erratic, and the weight of the face growing on his wrist clawed at his mind. His knees buckled under the force of the mental assault, and he collapsed onto the ground. The pain was unlike anything he had endured, searing, all-consuming, as if his very identity was being stripped away. Behind him, Dolores watched in alarm, her voice trembling with concern as she called out to him. Vakir couldn't respond. His mind was already splintering under the pressure of foreign memories invading his consciousness. Dantalion's face, now adorned with additional eyes and mouths that blinked and grinned in horrifying synchronicity, leered at Vakir. From his hand, another eye opened, its glowing gaze piercing into Vakir's soul. Dantalion gleefully explained the origin of the face now latched onto Vakir, a tormented soul who had succumbed to paranoia and schizophrenia, a man who had tragically murdered his own family in a fit of delusion. The face embedded in Vakir's wrist began to pulsate, its grotesque features twisting and shifting. Its essence spread like a parasite, merging its traumatic memories with Vakir's own, sending his mind into a chaotic spiral. The pain intensified as the face took on a life of its own, creeping upward and beginning to distort half of Vakir's features. His expression split, half a demented smile, half his own grimace of agony. Dantalion mocked Vakir, his words laced with sadistic pleasure as he noted how two conflicting sets of memories were colliding within a single mind. Vakir's own past began to blur and meld with the horrifying trauma of the schizophrenic man, threatening to unravel his very sense of self. The edges of his consciousness frayed, and his vision flickered between moments of his life and the anguished memories of the other. The torment was relentless, a cacophony of emotions and pain battering his psyche. Dantalion's amusement turned to astonishment as Vakir made a desperate decision. Through sheer willpower and unimaginable pain, Nighthound raised his blade and severed his own arm at the elbow. The sickening crunch of bone and the splatter of blood filled the air as the dismembered limb fell to the ground, writhing as the parasitic face continued to contort grotesquely. Vakir staggered, but stood tall, his breathing ragged and labored, his face pale from the loss of blood. Behind him, Dolores gasped in horror, her hands covering her mouth as tears welled in her eyes. She couldn't comprehend the sheer resolve it had taken for Vakir to mutilate himself to break free from Dantalion's grip. Her gaze was filled with anguish, but Vakir, his expression steely despite his pain, reassured her with a glance not to worry. To her astonishment, the wound at Vakir's elbow began to knit itself back together almost immediately. Muscle fibers wove back into place, veins reconnected, and new flesh grew over the site until a fully intact arm emerged. The process was rapid, unnerving, and seemingly impossible. Vakir flexed his regenerated hand, showing no sign of the previous injury, his calm voice explaining that while he faced demons, he himself was far from ordinary. Dantalion observed silently, his grin widening as understanding dawned. His gaze lingered on the Beelzebub sword in Vakir's grip, sensing its potent energy, an unmistakable relic of Dantalion's own creation. Recognition flared in his many eyes as he also noted Vakir's powerful aura, one befitting a warrior of the highest degree. A gleeful, twisted smile stretched across Dantalion's face as he realized the formidable challenge before him. This battle would not end easily. Dantalion's hand began to churn and swell unnaturally, the flesh bubbling as grotesque shapes emerged from beneath the surface. Distorted faces began to push through the skin, their features warped and incomplete, eyes too large, mouths stretched unnaturally wide, and half-formed expressions frozen in agony. The bubbling stopped as his fingers thickened and hardened, resembling jagged, blackened spikes, their edges gleaming with lethal intent. Dantalion's gaze flickered with cruel amusement as he raised the malformed appendage, aiming it toward Vakir with deliberate malice. Vakir, sensing the shift in Dantalion's tactics, immediately adopted a defensive stance, his grip on the Beelzebub sword tightening. 
his body tensed, every muscle coiled and ready to spring into action. Behind him, Dolores stood frozen, her hands trembling at her sides, her eyes wide with fear. The sinister aura radiating from Dantalion's warped hand left her paralyzed, unable to move or even cry out. The demon's focus shifted abruptly from Vakir to Dolores, his predatory gaze locking onto her as his grotesque hand adjusted its aim. Her breath caught as the realization dawned. She was the target. Time seemed to slow as Dantalion's hand erupted, sending a searing projectile of dark energy hurtling toward her. She squeezed her eyes shut, bracing herself against the inevitable. Before the attack could reach her, a sharp metallic clang shattered the tension. Vakir had intercepted the strike, deflecting it with the precision of the Beelzebub sword. Sparks flew as the blade absorbed the impact, the dark energy dissipating into the air. The force of the block rippled through the hallway, causing loose debris to scatter and dust to fill the air. Dantalion's smile widened, the grotesque transformation of his hand escalating further. More eyes and mouths sprouted across the corrupted flesh, their pupils darting and mouths chattering incoherently, emitting fragmented whispers and guttural groans. Each grotesque feature seemed alive, writhing and twisting in an unnerving symphony of chaos. The mouths grinned hungrily, as if relishing the tension in the air, while the eyes glared with malevolent intent, focusing on Vakir and Dolores with unsettling precision. Dantalion's voice oozed with malice as he took a step forward, the grotesque hand pulsating ominously. His smile stretched unnaturally wide, revealing rows of jagged teeth. He gloated, gesturing to Dolores with his monstrous hand, as if savoring the fear etched on her face. His words dripped with mockery, delighting in what he perceived as a newfound vulnerability in the Nighthound. Vakir's silence was unyielding, but his stance grew even more resolute. Dolores, still trembling, clutched her chest, the weight of Dantalion's implications sinking into her like a cold dagger. Dantalion hurled more grotesque, wailing faces toward Dolores, each one streaking through the air like a projectile imbued with malice. Vakir, unflinching, stepped in between her and the attack, his blade a blur as it intercepted and deflected each grotesque face. The severed remnants of the faces disintegrated mid-air, their cries fading into silence. Dolores called out to him, urging him to focus on the demon instead of shielding her, but his determination remained unwavering. Her heart pounded at his words, and despite her fear, she clenched her hands tightly, knowing she couldn't falter. Yet dread continued to course through her veins, her trembling betraying her inner turmoil. The golden aura surrounding her faltered, her resolve crumbling under the weight of fear and guilt. Her vision blurred with tears as panic overtook her. Dentalion's malicious grin widened. His plan had worked perfectly. Dolores froze as one of the discarded faces landed near her feet, its features softening into something horrifyingly familiar. It was Quilty's face. Her breath caught as the familiar voice emerged from the twisted visage, sobbing and pleading. The recognition sent a wave of terror through her, and her trembling worsened. Dantalion snarled in frustration and shifted tactics. His arm began to convulse violently, expanding grotesquely. Veins of pulsating green light spread across the flesh as his arm transformed into massive, translucent tentacles. The appendages glowed faintly, a sickly luminescent green, their surface slick and shimmering like oozing living glass. Embedded within the writhing mass were hundreds of faces, distorted and contorted, their expressions locked in endless torment. The tentacles surged forward, their immense size filling the hallway and slamming into the walls, leaving cracks and rubble in their wake. With a bellow, he unleashed the tentacles, which lunged toward them like massive serpents, their faces screaming in anguish. Each movement caused the hallway to quake, the translucent appendages smashing through walls and sending debris flying. Dantalion's grotesque arm now filled the space, its size dwarfing Vakir and Dolores. He taunted them, promising unimaginable agony as he aimed to overwhelm their minds by forcibly transplanting hundreds of tortured faces onto their bodies. Vakir gritted his teeth, his stance firm despite the overwhelming onslaught, 
The Beelzebub sword gleamed as it sliced through the air, severing the writhing tentacles and cleaving the tortured faces apart. Dentalion roared in frustration, but with each severed limb, two more would sprout in its place, growing even larger, their glowing translucence giving them an almost otherworldly presence. Amid the chaos, one face among the mass stopped Vakir in his tracks. His blade wavered mid-swing as his eyes widened in horror. It was her face, Perry's. The memories struck him like a hammer blow. The orphanage, her bright laughter, the delicate crown of flowers she had once placed on his head. Her smiling face in his mind was now replaced by the sorrowful, anguished visage in Dantalion's arsenal. His grip faltered, and a wave of guilt and pain surged through him, paralyzing his actions for the briefest moment. That moment was all Dantalion needed. The tentacles surged forward, their massive forms wrapping around both Vakir and Dolores. The faces screamed and wept as the translucent mass engulfed them entirely. The monstrous appendages smashed against the walls with a sickening force, growing even larger as they writhed, the grotesque display filling the hallway with destruction and despair. Vakir's muffled struggle was drowned out by the roaring sound of the demon's laughter, echoing triumphantly through the crumbling corridor. 